Welcome back to Secure Freedom Radio. Uh, we're joined this segment by John Sidalides, who is a principal with Trilogy Advisors and an advisor to the State Department. John, I wanted to talk with you a bit about what's going on with Greece. It is uh, It has been festering for a while, kind of simmering to a boil, and I, I don't know that people are really sure what's going to come of it. it. It sounds like they may have come to an agreement to, to bail them out, but... I think there's an awful lot of smoke and, and mirrors going on, and we're hoping you could shed a little light on that. So what's the current state of play uh, with Greece and the rest of the EU? Well, first, thank you for having me, Jim. Uh, let me just state that where we are right now remains, unfortunately, for Greece, for the Eurozone, and for all observers around the world of what's been happening in the last six, seven months, remains in a state of flux. The Greek government has taken a 180-degree turn from a very, very poorly negotiated bailout process in the first six months of 2015, and we delivered one of the harshest reality checks in modern history in July of 2015 that's simply wasting everyone's time trying to achieve unattainable goals was the worst thing the Greeks could have done for themselves. It has now cost them $60 billion in additional economic damage that has to be absorbed into a third bailout package, the negotiations of which still have not been agreed to. And what we saw the last several weeks was a series of votes in the Greek parliament insisted upon by the Eurozone, the group, the group of European finance ministers overseeing uh, Greece's bailout terms, stating that first there must be preconditions to launching negotiations on whether the Eurozone and the Troika, that is the European Central Bank along with the IMF, would even offer Greece another bailout round. So that process is scheduled to start this week. It could take anywhere from two to four weeks. There's no guarantee it'll have a positive outcome, although most observers believe that at this point, with the very difficult additional reforms the Greek parliament has voted in, that that will in fact take place. And so Greece will secure an additional about 86 billion euro or 95 billion dollars on top of a quarter trillion dollar debt that already burdens its economic fortunes going forward. There's just one last glitch, Jim. The IMF, which has been asked to participate in this, has declared that it cannot do so unless there is some type of sustainable debt relief in sight for Greece over the long term. And that's something that Germany and other northern European powers do not want to give to Greece yet until they see that the Greeks are serious about not only enacting but implementing reforms. So the IMF role may not be clear for yet another six months or so. Uh, We're talking with John Sidalides. John is an advisor to the State Department as well as a principal with Trilogy Advisors. And he just laid out for us a pretty scary prospect for the recovery of Greece and their overall uh, financial prospects. Now, John, you you mentioned that this is all contingent on Greece and and the Eurozone and the the banking folks who are are part of that coming to an agreement that has some sort of long-term prospect for success. Given that that this has just been kind of the putting a Band-Aid on a sucking chest wound for a while, what reason is there to believe that the, the Greek economy or the, the entire system where they, they seem to be spending, like us, but in, in a greater way, considerably more than they're taking in, likely to change? Is there, is there a reason to believe that this is other than kicking the can down the road? This has been a problem that has been festering and growing in the Greek economy for approximately 40 years. And it all really came to a head with the global financial crisis, exposing Greece's inability to repay the massive debts that it had accumulated over the decades, and especially in the last 10 to 12 years. The problem, Jim, I think in many ways is a strategic one for Greece. It really does not have a productive economy. It exports very little of great value into global markets, It's in many ways a closed economy, very non-competitive in many ways. You have overwhelmingly powerful trade unions that have opposed any serious reform over the decades, many nationalized industries, and just barriers to business freedom, to foreign direct investment that are really out of the norm with most Western freer economies. And so what Greece really needs is economic freedom. 
and it's been very, very difficult to get the Greek body politic and the political leadership to move the country in that direction. In many ways, this is the worst medicine for Greece and the best medicine at the same time, because without this crisis, it really would not have been imaginable for Greece to ever undertake the kinds of reforms that the Eurozone is now imposing on Greece in exchange for additional financial assistance. Greece should remain in the Eurozone or whether it should plan uh, to revert to the drachma, which was the currency until 2001. And many of the people who know these economic issues far better than I do uh, will posit that what's less important is the currency and what's more important is reform. Without reform, it doesn't matter what currency the Greeks use. But reform is now a great possibility, and if they enact these reforms and implement them, you could see a tremendous Greek economic revival in five to seven years. So now let me ask you a question. Does, does Greece represent the far end of the social democracy project? That I often hear, you know, progressives in the United States saying we need to be more like Europe. We need to have better benefits. We need to have better wages and pensions. And and yet, you know, that seems to be what a large part of the problem has been for Greece. Those things have outstripped the productivity, and consequently, they're they're upside down on what they're producing versus what they're consuming and and giving away internally. So are they an outlier in the EU, or are they a harbinger of what happens when, as Margaret Thatcher said, you know, socialism's great until you run out of other people's money? In some ways, Jim, uh, both of those apply to Greece. Uh, you know, Europe is far more uh, social democratic, if not outright socialist, depending on which country we're talking about, than we would believe might be the case anytime soon in mainstream American politics. Uh, the problem with Greece, and for that matter, other countries such as Italy, uh, less or so in Spain and Portugal and France, is that you have a a greater recklessness in terms of the way socialism is the engine of uh, political economy in these countries. Uh, Italy, Spain, and France at least have very productive economies, and they're able to sustain the socialist model in ways that Greece has simply been unable to. Because Greece does not have a very productive economy, It is dependent almost exclusively on European Union subsidies and on cheap credit since the drachma was uh, removed, uh, replaced by the euro, and then Greeks were able to get 2 and 3% interest rates as if they were based on the Deutschmark. But what you have also in Greece, Jim, is unbridled corruption. And that has really eaten away at the fabric of the economy in Greece. Nothing really gets done in Greece in any, in any significant manner without bribery, without payoffs, without having inside connections in government. And this is what has held back a Greek uh, society that, as many people here in the United States and elsewhere around the world, Greeks are some of the hardest working, most productive, and eventually most successful immigrant groups in any country. That's built into their DNA when they operate in an environment that lets them thrive, such as that that we at least have had here in the United States to date, but that has been denied them in Greece, and it's why the country has remained uh, relatively poor, uh, unfortunately very corrupt, and highly unproductive and non-competitive in ways that are destroying the middle class of what used to be an affluent, modern, developed European Union state. Hopefully this will, as you said, become a wake-up call for Greece and they can uh, make the hard decisions they need to and return to the productivity its citizens can make even if its system has failed to. Uh, Folks, we've been talking with John Sidalides, who is a principal with Trilogy Advisors, as well as an advisor to the U.S. State Department. Up next, we'll be talking with Joseph Schrodel a retired brigadier general who served in the United States Army Corps of Engineers and currently executive director of the Society of American Military Engineers. 